This video is primarily for the honest skeptics of the Flat Earth. Are you taking a piss? Do you actually think that this video is changing anyone's mind? Because if you do, you're more deluded than I ever thought. Look, for a video to change people's minds, it needs to show strong evidence. You've got to demonstrate that the globe is wrong, not just say it is. Because saying and doing are two very different things. So with that being said, let's stop talking about your feelings and demonstrate demonstrate why this whole flat earth idea isn't just ridiculous, it's scientifically invalid. Shut up and sit down you big ball f subscribe. Well hello everybody, today we're tackling taboo conspiracy and a 21 mile laser test across water. Now we'll have a listen to Mr Taboo's very smart explanation as to why he thinks it proves a flat earth. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. So over to you pal. Despite how difficult it may be, I simply ask you, as an honest, objective, reasonable person, to set aside your indoctrination and belief in the globe, at least temporarily, and examine the evidence that I'm going to share with you today. When he says indoctrination, I think he means basic science literacy. Look, I'm happy to be an honest, objective, and a reasonable person. In fact, that's exactly why I can't agree with you. Being objective means you have to look at all the evidence, not just the stuff that supports your conclusion. It means you can't just ignore things like atmospheric refraction, which is literally the reason why this laser test worked. As Asking me to ignore the globe is asking me to ignore reality, and that just isn't what honest scepticism looks like. So I'll be objective, yeah, I'll examine your evidence, but I'm bringing my science box and a basic understanding of how light works in cold air, because you clearly forgot to check yours. I believe the flat earth evidence here is dispositive, and I think you'll find it compelling as well. Flat earth is certainly a very difficult truth to accept because the ramifications are so great. But we do indeed live on a flat and stationary Earth. Claiming the evidence for a flat stationary Earth is dispositive is a bold move, because if the Earth were a flat disk, gravity would just pull everything to the center, not straight down. This means as you walk towards the edge, objects would be pulled sideways, and trees would grow on the squiff, desperately trying to stay on your magical space pizza, and the water would just pile up in the middle. So the fact that the oceans stay put and trees grow straight up is dispositive proof of a sphere, not a disc. Our claim requires us to rewrite every rule of physics and observation, and that's just too funny to even take seriously. <laughs> According to the globe model, all bodies of water, including the Great Salt Lake, must have a certain degree of convexity to them. Well, that's a fantastic claim. According to the globe model, aka reality, all bodies of water must have a certain degree of convexity to them. And he's right. But here's the problem for flat earthers. They fundamentally misunderstand or misrepresent what level means. Now on Earth, level is defined by gravity. Gravity! Have you ever heard of gravity? Gravity pulls every single water molecule towards the center of the planet's mass, forcing the Great Lake and every other body of water on Earth to conform perfectly to Earth's spherical shape. It's geodetically level. The water is convex, but the curve is spread out over such a massive distance that your eye can't see it over such a short distance. As Samuel Robotham wrote in 1849, if the Earth is a globe and is 25,000 English statute miles in circumference, the surface of all standing water must have a certain degree of convexity. Every part must be an arc of a circle. From the summit of any such arc, there will exist a curvature or declination of 8 inches in the first statute mile. In the second mile, the fall will be 32 inches. In the third mile, 72 inches or 6 feet as shown in the following diagram. Nice to see you digging into some really modern and definitely not biased research. The blog you're talking about is basically the grandfather of today's Flat Earth Circus. And the famous 8 inches per mile squared isn't magic. It's just an approximate approximation for how much the ground drops away from a level tangent line on a sphere the size of the earth. But it's when flat earthers try to use it that the comedy starts, but we don't see a six foot drop over three miles. Well, no shit, Sherlock. 
I have continued the numbers up to 200 miles. All water must have this convexity if the globe was a reality. Ooh, pushing the Earth's curvature maths to 200 miles is very dramatic. I can see why flat Earthers do it. But 8 inches per mile squared is only accurate over small distances. The reason we don't see this 5 miles of missing Earth at 200 miles is because the curvature physically dips and objects are below your line of sight long before you ever get to that 200 mile mark. That massive drop isn't a problem we need to hide, it's a physical reality confirmed every single time a ship disappears hull first over the horizon. But this Earth curvature does not exist anywhere. That is such a silly thing to say, that's like saying the moon doesn't exist. No, hang on a second, you're a flat earther and you. We can't confirm or deny whether you believe space is real, so uh, moving on. <laughs> to uh, start shooting the laser once the sun goes down. I'll be shooting the laser that direction. Let me read you off the coordinates that I'm located at. My latitude is 41.037384. My longitude is negative 112.278569. Here's a photograph of how my camera was set up standing in the water. Here's a photo of the laser. And here's a selfie. I also brought my two sons to manage the laser and the flashlight. Based on the globe curvature math, from an observation height of 5 feet and a distance of 21.03 miles, the curvature of the Earth should have been hiding 223 feet of the other shore. Now, the irony is definitely not lost on me, and I hope it's not lost on you either, but do you think these flat earthers even realise? And Taboo Conspiracy doesn't seem like a stupid guy, he seems like a very intelligent guy, you know, apart from the fact that he thinks the earth is flat, but do you think he sees the irony in the fact that he's using spherical geometry to try and demonstrate that the earth isn't spherical? Robert would have had to have been standing on something like this 218-foot cross to see my laser 21 miles away, or vice versa. That's huge. Do you see the door at the bottom there? But before I get to the laser, I wanted to share some other footage. Of course, I had to film the beautiful sunset. This is a great spot if you're like me and appreciate these views. I also filmed the Kennecott smelter stack, and you can see all the way to the bottom and to the beach. There is no Earth curvature there. But it's atmospheric refraction, that's why you can see it, and that's why you're conveniently leaving that part out. The warm air over the lake is acting like a funhouse mirror, essentially, bending the light down and lifting the image of the stack right over Earth's curve and into your camera. You're not seeing around the curve, you're seeing an atmospheric mirage that makes distant objects look taller and closer than they are. This video is already impossible under the globe. If you are claiming that I'm looking at a mirage, then you need to tell me where the mirage ends and the real line of sight begins. See, that's what I meant when I said that Tabu isn't a dullard. He knows what we are going to say he's looking at. And to answer your question, it doesn't. It's not like the mirage stops at a defined point. It's a continuous effect caused by the constant temperature layers in the atmosphere bending your sight line. Compare this still from Robert's video that shows the stack from his point of view. Of course, it was cold out there in January and the temperature dropped rapidly as it got dark, but the biggest problem was the fact that I did not have phone service on that corner of Antelope Island, and so I had no way to communicate with Robert. I mistakenly thought Robert would have been in front of the lights. I was actually just about to give up when my son said that they spotted Robert's laser in the distance. Sometimes you miss those things when you're trying to operate the camera as you're looking at that little screen. But let's watch the video and please forgive my giddiness when I see the distant laser as I was pretty excited. I see it. Yeah, I saw that. You saw what? The little flash over there. It's like to the right of the lights a little yeah. bit. That's yeah! Can you point over there? That was it. I caught it on footage just for a second. 
And then they turn, probably turned it off. Keep. But it's to the right of the light. Interesting. See, I was looking in the wrong direction. You guys saw it with your naked eyes? Yeah, I saw the blue over there. That's awesome. Oh, there he is! <laughs> Only a flat earther could get that excited by something that completely destroys their argument. You're showing us a superior mirage, which is caused by the same atmospheric refraction we've been talking about. The extreme bending of light over the curve of the Earth isn't just making the single laser visible, it's also distorting the image by making a duplicate copy appear above the actual object. You did notice there were two blue dots, didn't you? The bottom dot is the real laser and the upper dot is an image created by the density difference in the air layers. This phenomenon is a well-documented optical effect in atmospheric physics and it's yet another visual consequence of light traveling over a massive curved surface. Look at this still from the video. You can see that I have a direct line of sight as I'm looking straight at the intense source of the laser. I'm not seeing the laser from an angle. Also, notice the reflection of the laser on the water. As I said in the video, did both the laser and its reflection hop the curvature to present a false flat earth? Where did the massive earth bulge run off to? Right then, let's walk you through why that's not even close, shall we? A reflection on water would be vertically aligned and directly beneath the actual source. So far, so good. But here's the problem. A reflection would be dimmer, stretched, and kind of smeared out towards the camera. Not a neat blue dot sitting perfectly on the horizon like it's waiting for a bus. And that bottom blob is way too compact, way too clean, and way too locked to the horizon to be a reflection. The top one, that thing which is floating higher than my expectations of flat earth logic, where it's distorted, lifted, and in the perfect position to be a superior mirage. So no, the top is not the laser. The bottom is the real source, and the top is the atmosphere doing its best impression of a Photoshop clone tool. In order to maintain the globe narrative, some globe propagandists will claim that the laser perfectly bent in an arc to match the Earth's curvature but the claim is ridiculous. Well, you've hit the nail right on the head. The most ridiculous claim is that the laser perfectly bent into a seamless arc to match Earth's curvature. Nobody thinks that except Flat Earthers, pal. That's just a scientific fantasy. Atmospheric refraction is real. It bends light, but it's dependent on messy, uneven things like humidity, temperature layers, and air pressure. The atmosphere is turbulent. It's constantly changing. If the laser were truly bending in a perfect arc for 21 miles, that would require the air's temperature and density to change in a perfectly predictable, mathematical precise curve across the entire lake, which never happens in reality. The fact that the image you're seeing is often flickering, distorted, and doubled proves that the light path is not a perfect gentle arc, but a messy, variable path caused by a turbulent atmosphere. The globe doesn't need a perfect bend miracle, it only needs the basic messy refraction we know exists to explain the visibility of an object like your laser that should be 218 feet below the horizon. But we don't need to worry about it, because we've got reality on our side. Flat Earthers? Eh, not so much. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Love you. Bye. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. Knock knock. Who's there? Grandad. Oh shit, stop the funeral. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 it's never, ever, 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 ever